sadly, we are being left out. There's actually people who don't have access to water, clean water right now. Go to Morovis, go to Las Marías, Lare. Palma del Mar, they have light. That's the rich people, they have light. Why do they have light? The first few weeks after the hurricane, there was so much news coverage. But then suddenly it just kind of stopped. I mean, Trump visited Puerto Rico and then after that, it just stopped. But I kept hearing that they still didn't have power and I just thought, I don't know, I just thought I could go there and speak to some folks and try to figure out what was really happening. I'm not news, I'm not I'm not really a journalist, I'm just a guy with a camera. Once I had the idea, I had to figure out how to actually get to Puerto Rico, how to organize my trip. At the time, it was early December, and I didn't even know if I'd be able to get power. I didn't know if there were hotels that I'd be able to stay at. So I went to Reddit, and I made a post. And uh, that's how I met Alexis. So I was using Reddit to promote a study I was doing, collecting data on uh, Puerto Ricans in the United States. And you posted in the Puerto Rico Reddit, or subreddit, I want to go to Puerto Rico. Uh, is it safe? It's not safe. I want to go and see it. And I just said, for sure, you can come, just go. You can stay in my house if you want. I'll take you around, so. Alexis had no idea who I was. I had no idea who he was. But he made the offer in good faith and I accepted it. Sometimes in life you gotta take those chances. And I just really wanted to show you the side that doesn't get shown in the news or in the you know to the tourists, etc. Uh, this is one of the worst ones we've seen. You see that huge satellite that's down? Yeah. Like this looks like it could fall any second and it's just left like that. I mean, I, I went there thinking that I would interview people and learn about life off the power grid, but truthfully, I found out through direct experience as well because their home had no power. And the people here, as far as I know, have no idea when the power will come back. Is that correct? You are correct, yes. How does that make you feel as a Puerto Rican, as a member of this community? Do you feel more could be done? Do you feel let down in any way? Yes, I, I, I think I've told you that there's some small generating station in the entrance of the community, but that station, that substation does not give energy to the community. It gives energy to a very affluent neighborhood across the highway. What has been a specific challenge, perhaps the biggest challenge that your family has been faced with being off the power grid? I think communication has been a big thing. Me and my brother, for example, we're two brothers and my mom lives here in Puerto Rico, so it's been very challenging to keep in touch with her. But I know our, our perils are not as big as the other families who are completely dependent on energy, say for example, to keep the oxygen machine for a family member working or to keep insulin uh, refrigerated so a diabetic patient can have their daily dose of insulin. So in many aspects, we're blessed because we don't have those situations. But I, what I feel for the people of the community and the whole Puerto Rico area that has those communities and haven't been able to give an energy uh, for a while now, three months, you know, this is a three month anniversary of Hurricane Maria. And there's still areas that are off the grid. It's incredible. Yep, it is. This is an issue that hits quite close to home. 
as I would find out the very next day when he drove me to do an interview with another member of his community. My mom, after Thanksgiving, she had like what appeared to be a flu. And a couple of days later, she had what it seemed like a really, really strong virus. We ended up in the emergency room of a very famous private hospital in San Juan. And she was told she had a really strong infection and diverticulitis which is an inflammation on the intestines. And 24 hours later, she was released from the hospital. I mean, you are visibly really weak. You are in a lot of pain. And they sent her home. The next morning, my dad called my cell phone and he said, come really fast, your mom is really, really sick. When I got to the room, she was saying, I can't breathe, help me, I can't breathe. My dad was trying to get the emergency system 911 and we have no power still, so the communications are really shitty. And what happened, the call didn't connect it to the 911 system. Two months and a half later, we can get 9-11 service right. My dad had to leave the house, go to the street, find better signal, and then he could actually call the paramedics. In one thing and the other, my mom died in my arms. We gave her CPR while the paramedics arrived. They took a while because there was a traffic congestion, like really big traffic congestion, because we don't have light on the street. We've already seen three examples of how being off the power grid affected her mother. From healthcare, to phone services, to traffic congestion, being without light may have cost her mother her life, but what she tells me next doesn't just affect her mother, it affects the entire island of Puerto Rico. The director of the funerary called to my cell phone and he told me, forensic science department released the body, they are not doing an autopsy because they think it's not necessary. <laughs> and we go like, what? How isn't it? necessary we want to know what happened mom she left 16 18 hours ago from the hospital we want to know what happened we don't want to judge anybody but we want to know because this is part of a grief and he said i'm gonna be really really honest with what i'm gonna say but the forensic science department right now is so full they are seeing the bodies from the funerary homes in the parking lot, doing the lab work inside the car, verify the bodies for anything. They close it up and they release it. And I go like, what? And he goes like, yes, they are not keeping any bodies inside there. The certificate of my mom says that she died of a natural cause. She didn't die of a natural cause. She wasn't somebody who was like really, really sick, who needed 
some respiratory machine or something. She just had a virus a couple of hours ago. What the hell happened? Maybe a blood clot? We will never be sure of that. So every single system failed my family in the most horrible, traumatizing way you can imagine. Asking why do they have light isn't just asking why some neighborhoods have less inconveniences than others. This isn't just about the cold showers and walking around with a cell phone so you can see at night. Uh, this is about life and death. People are dying who don't have to die in Puerto Rico. I know that's a tough message to internalize. I've thought myself about, is this too real for YouTube? Is this too, uh, too intense? But you know what, I was given a very unique chance when I went to Puerto Rico and connected with Alexis. I was able to see a side of Puerto Rico that most people don't see. And now I've came home with a truth that most people don't have. And I feel responsible for sharing that. So, if your eyes have been opened a bit by this video, uh, if you feel outraged or saddened or inspired to help in any way, share this video. Let people know what's actually happening because Puerto Rico deserves better. We are so proud of our island and we are still happy people. Um, we like to celebrate everything, especially holidays. <laughs> There's still good things in Puerto Rico. Um, we don't have electricity and water, but we're happy. <laughs> <laughs>